Councilmember Chair. That would be very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, uh, Commissioners. You know, um, I do have a couple of questions, but I just want to follow up on that issue about the emergencies. Mm -hmm. The emergencies, the, the bulk of them, as the Chairman said, are ones that are occasioned by the gaps created by congressional oversight. Then even after that, if you look at some of the emergencies, I think we have to be careful about the categories they fall in. There are some where there's already been a hearing, there's already been a full process, but because there's some need to act prior to congressional waiting, and this is not even the gap period filler that some of the other emergencies are about, that we go ahead and pass the emergency awaiting uh, the final. Um, for example, with vending. That was the situation with vending, to get us something in the interim while we're moving forward with a permanent so that we're not uh, with personnel legislation. personnel legislation and that sort of thing. So um, we, we just can't lump them all together. And even looking at them, it doesn't always follow that by acting as an emergency, there's been some short circuiting of the usual process. I, I just want to mention that because... Um, I know there's a good deal of sensitivity about emergencies, but it, they're not all of a piece, is what I'm saying. I, I, I certainly understand that, and I appreciate your answer and that of, uh, uh, of the chairman's as well. Uh, I, I think what happens is uh, they do all get lumped together, and that's probably not fair that they get lumped together. So to the extent that, um, that the council, I think, can... Um, inform not only ANCs but the general public about that. I think it would be very helpful because it's it's too easy for people to simply say, "Oh, it's emergency legislation." That means you know no notice um, and and no opportunity to comment. And as you both have pointed out, that that's not fair. Um, so while while I appreciate the the chairman is saying that there are, are fewer emergency situations. I do also appreciate that there is a need, right. as you've explained. Um, but um, but the, to the extent that you can deal with the perception, uh, with you know, some facts, I think that, that's, yeah, on that would be level, very helpful to all the, of us. The chairman has done that by changing the, the – now, this is very obscure, I guess. It's not the kind of notice that you're thinking. But on the agenda, we now separate out different kinds of emergencies so people can see, at least exactly see that. The now, as I say, that, you know, that might not be a, a clarion call to the entire population, but, sure. uh, <laughs> but at least it's something. Um, I did want to ask you, since it keeps coming up this matter about great weight, what is your understanding of great weight, A, what it means, and to what issues does it, does it extend? Um, when a, um, it, my, my understanding of great weight, and, I, and uh, we're very fond of great weight because it was actually a, a uh, former commissioner in ANC 3C who brought the court case that um, uh, resulted in great weight being defined and giving ANCs th this wonderful opportunity that we have to be influential. Um, my understanding of it is that um, uh, when we receive notice of um, a government action, a proposed government action, or a report or a study that is intended to lead to some kind of government action, that uh, we are in a position to, to receive great weight. And if at a public meeting we pass a, um, a, a motion or a resolution with specificity, uh, providing our views, um, that uh, whatever body we direct that, that resolution or motion to has to respond uh, by um, affording us great weight, and they need to respond in writing and with specificity to each of the, the issues that we raise. Um, that's my understanding of, um, of uh, what is it, it is intended to be in, in practice, how it works, is often something very different. Commissioner Reeves, is that your understanding as well? Yes. So that any time that there's um, a notice of government action, of whatever character, of whatever matter, that if you were to pass a resolution with your own justifications and your position on it, that the agency to whom it is directed to give it great weight must consider it and, and respond to you. But it's not as if there's any substantive position that the agency must take on account of your view, is that right? I mean, it's not as if 
there's a compelling justification or any basis, you know, for them to decide differently. It's just that they have to take account of and respond to what your position is. Well, I think I would say, Councilmember Che, that it goes a bit beyond that. I think that it does, you know, we represent a lot of citizens. And if we, in a public meeting, take a position and provide reasons and detail as to why we are taking that position, what our position is, I think the regulatory body or the government agency has a responsibility under the ANC law, that's the way I would interpret it, to respond to us and to indicate that they have taken our views into consideration in their decision-making process. Not just that they sort of tick off all of our issues and say, well, we don't agree, we don't agree, but in the course of their decision-making to incorporate our views into it and to say this is why we reached a different conclusion. I think it's a more sort of comprehensive evaluation, depending on whatever the subject may be. And sometimes they're hearings. But at the end of the day, it's nevertheless advisory? Yes. Yes. But the only other agency in the district government that receives great weight is the Office of Planning. It is only the Office of Planning and ANCs that are afforded great weight. And is this directed to executive branch agencies? I believe it is. I believe it is, although I have to say, quite frankly, it's, yes, of course, yes. Right. Okay. And so is it directed to the council? I would certainly like it to be. Elected representatives of the council. I would have to go back and look at the law carefully to give you a really informed answer to that. But I believe it does include the council. So your understanding is that if your ANC takes a position on a matter and you direct that to the council, that the council has to give you great weight, i.e., according to what you said, that they would have to explain to you why they decided how they did and meet each of your arguments? Well, I'd be happy to go back through the law and look at it with some specificity to see whether the council is included. I can tell you that we have, I don't think, ever asked the council to respond to us with specificity. We've never gone to the council and said, you know, we sent you something and you didn't respond to us. But I would think if it just logically, but of course I'm not sure exactly what the wording of the law is, but logically I would think that if the executive branch departments, if all of the regulatory bodies, you know, quasi-legislative are required to give ANCs great weight, that it would extend to the council. But perhaps it doesn't. Respectfully, I'd like to suggest that that's probably not the case. And there's a gulf, a huge difference between the executive agencies and the legislative agencies since the legislative representatives are themselves elected representatives who represent the people. So I would just suggest, you know, we can talk about it offline, as they say, but I think that it's not aimed at that and the law was not intended to be so aimed. Well, maybe that's an amendment you would want to consider. I doubt it, actually. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilmember Che. Thank you all both for your service to our city. And we appreciate the fact that you spend many, many hours doing this work. And as has been said many times, without compensation, at least in the financial sense. I want to mention, too, that your meetings are held on the fourth Monday of each month at 7.30 p.m. The third Monday, okay, third Monday of each month at 7.30, okay, at the second district. See, they wanted to tell you, Mr. Chairman, that was the fourth Monday. Pardon? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'll be a week late every month, right? At 3220 Idaho Avenue Northwest. Thank you all very much. Thank you.